Since November the 7th, 2024, Putin's army has resumed the counteroffensive in Kursk region with the aim of driving out the Ukrainian defenders by January the 20th, 2025. The new counteroffensive of the Russian armed forces began not only chaotically but also bloodily. The Ukrainian drone operator Kriegsforsha counted 77 destroyed armored vehicles of the Russian armed forces in six days of fighting. Forbes reports this number could be enough for three full battalions, and these are only those armored vehicles that can be counted and are in sight. The General Staff of Ukraine reported a record number of liquidated occupiers, 1,950 soldiers and officers of the Russian Armed Forces. Also on November the 11th, 104 armored vehicles of the Russian Armed Forces were destroyed along the entire front line. Experts say that the majority of the Russian Army's losses are in the Kursk region, where the fighting is several times more intense than in other areas. The Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies stated that in the Kursk region, the enemy is striking Ukrainian armed forces positions at intervals of 10 to 15 minutes. Last Thursday, after arrest and the arrival of reinforcements, the Kremlin threw units of the 810th Marine Brigade and the 51st Airborne Regiment into battle. OSINT analyst Perpetua said that the Kremlin is in such a hurry because Russia is running out of resources to wage war. There are major economic difficulties. Putin now considers Ukraine very vulnerable and the US is powerless. In six days, the 810th Brigade managed to strengthen its positions in the Pogrebki area, but at the cost of losing armored vehicles, including new armored personnel carriers, as well as the lives of hundreds of occupiers. Three brigades of the Ukrainian armed forces are holding back the enemy, inflicting heavy losses both in manpower and military equipment. Recall the Russian army began active assault operations in the Kursk direction with the aim of breaking through the defense of the Ukrainian armed forces. However, the meat assaults rather testify to the unpreparedness of the Russians who are suffering heavy losses in these attacks. Commander-in-Chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Alexander Syrsky stated that Russia has transferred tens of thousands of occupiers from the best units to the Kursk region. At the same time, build analyst Julian Robka reported that Russia's counter-offensive has turned into a disaster for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and his generals. The enemy is suffering heavy losses. The system of power built by Russian dictator Vladimir Putin is unviable. It could collapse at any moment. The leader of the Russian Communists, chairman of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, Gennady Zyuganov, announced this at a plenary session of the State Duma. He called on the deputies not to be deceived by the rating figures, which indicate high support from the population. This is a phantom that can collapse in a second. As for the political system, I must say that it is unstable in our country. I think that those who are involved in the political system in the Kremlin, they are taking a risk in our country. People do not come to the elections. God forbid one thing happens, two, three, and it will collapse. I saw how the ratings collapsed. 95% voted for Gorbachev. Then in his homeland, he did not collect even half a percent, Zyuganov said. It should be noted that Zyuganov has headed the Russian communists since the very inception of the Russian Federation. He is absolutely loyal to the Putin regime, being an integral part of it. And thanks to this loyalty, the politician has remained in the position of head of the Communist Party for more than a quarter of a century. Earlier, another State Duma deputy made a bold statement about SBO. Russian MP Alexander Borodai, who stood at the origins of aggression against Ukraine, made a defeatist statement. He complained about problems in the army and the lack of clear goals of the war. He complained that the majority of the population in Russia does not support the so-called SVO and wants it to end as soon as possible. There is a declaration of unity, but we do not have unity in society. It is not true that it exists. We have very few of those who participate in the SVO in one way or another. Somewhere around 5 to 7 million at most. The rest pretend that this is not their war. You there, hurry up, finish it already, because we are already very tired of this war. This is the position of the majority of society, the Russian deputy said. He also noted the lack of a clear ideology in the Kremlin. Even the top leadership 
of the Russian Federation does not know what will happen after the war is over. Borodai stressed that the war did not go according to plan. He also acknowledged that the Russian Federation is running out of resources to continue it. New interesting details have emerged about the high-profile defeat of a large convoy of the Wagner Group in Mali, Africa. The Russian militants were traveling with the country's junta north to seize gold mines. This was reported by Transparency International Russia. The operation turned into a colossal failure. The group encountered fierce resistance from the rebels and was almost completely destroyed. Some of the Wagnerites and Malian soldiers were taken prisoner. Russian mercenaries in Africa are attracted primarily by commercial interests. The Kremlin provides military support to friendly regimes, strengthening their power, and in return, Russia gets access to natural resources, often bypassing local laws. T.I. writes, This was the case in Mali, where Russian mercenaries try to help the local junta seize gold deposits in order to ultimately receive a share of the profits from gold mining. Information about the defeat of the Wagnerites in northern Mali appeared in early August 2024. It was reported that Tuareg rebels had set a trap, as a result of which 84 Russian mercenaries and 47 Malian soldiers were killed. Among them was the administrator of the well-known far-right Z channel, The Grey Zone, Nikita Fedyakin. There were persistent rumors that some unknown Ukrainian specialists allegedly helped the Tuaregs defeat the Wagnerites. However, no evidence of this ever appeared. Recall, in July 2024, a large convoy of Wagnerites was ambushed in Mali. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that they were also involved in this defeat. Among the dozens of Wagner soldiers killed in a deadly battle against Tuareg rebels in the Malian desert were Russian war veterans who had served in Ukraine, Libya and Syria. The defeat cast doubt on the ability of Russian forces to be more effective in the region than Western troops. Reuters managed to identify 25 Russian mercenaries who were ambushed in Mali. Two of them presumably survived, but were captured. Among these people were experienced fighters who had survived, among other things, the Bakhmut meat grinder. Relatives of the liquidated militants told journalists that the bodies of their relatives were simply abandoned in the Malian desert and no one was involved in their evacuation. In Wagner, these militants are listed as missing in action. Complaints from families to Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and the Russian Defense Ministry were ignored. It is known that during this battle, Wagner's losses amounted to 84 fighters killed. Also, about 47 Malian soldiers died there.